Good afternoon, the audience. Um, well, we are going to talk about intangibles and banking credit merit. And I'm happy to present a, a number of people that uh, here in the meeting room are on my left. Um, we have some, some time to discuss a number of things. Um, first of all, um, I'm going to check my documents. I have uh, Karine Husson, who is uh, uh, situated in, in Brussels, and she's a senior investment manager at uh, PMV. PMV is the Participatie Maatschappij Vlaanderen. Uh, she's also a board member of the Belgian Corporate, Corporate Finance Association. Um, if you have been uh, good looking this morning into the session, you uh, already had uh, a view on, on Tjeert from uh, ABN AMRO. And I, I suppose that you're still having the same functions that you didn't change in the meantime. And so the, the person that is uh, 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 joining us is uh, Marco Pasquati. And he has a, a double head. Um, he is uh, from uh, one side, he is CFO, chairman of the Italian CFOs Association, and also a uh, capital advisor management uh, uh, at Escalus Capital. Correct. Okay, so I would kick off, as I did it this morning, with a quote from our famous friend uh, Lev Baruch. Uh, it's a very short one. Uh, it's telling that unless investors, uh, managers, policymakers, and I count in these also the bankers, um, are convinced that the financial reporting system is seriously deficient, and I have to say many aren't, the case for reform is not compelling. So accepting reality is <laughs> based on the increase of intangibles. And I would say if you don't have the time to read the book from Lev Baruch, just read the epilogue, page 200, I don't know what. It's called Advocacy Needed. So he is calling in people all around the world that will join us and that um, uh, will defend the, uh, the importance of intangibles. So um, I would now like to give the floor um, to Marco. Um, he prepared some slides. And um, so he's going to... Um, uh, present the slides, and then I will ask Karin and uh, Tjeert to comment on that, and then we can have a great discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all, all, all of all. Um, today we are talking about uh, uh, banking credit merit. Uh, can I have my slides? Is this one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Today we are talking about uh, Banking credit merit, and um, what is in a general and simple way banking credit merit? It's the determination of the credit worthiness uh, of a client by looking at uh, financial state, credit reports, uh, business cash flows, and uh, the goal of the credit analysis is to determine, uh, to, 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 to find out the level of the full risk to calculate the losses that the bank will will uh, will suffer if the client defaults, it's a some, it's a challenge process because uh, um, since that uh, many uh, information data from the from the client from the customers uh, are related to the past, uh, but the uh, credit merit uh, needs to be forward looking, not backward looking. So the the companies. Uh, uh, to be evaluated, they need to uh, provide uh, uh, business plan, uh, budget, uh, cash flow forecast. But uh, this is not the only uh, the only challenge. Um, guidelines on loan origination and monitoring, uh, published in 2020 by European Banking Authority, uh, ask to financial institutions to. Um, incorporate ESG factors and associated risk in the credit rating risk uh, appetite, adopting a, a an holistic approach, and uh, and also to take into account uh, the risk associated to uh, ESG factors uh, in the uh, financial condition of the of the borrowers. So um, this is a very challenge uh, challenge um, aspect. But uh, which is the impact uh, of, these, uh, of these guidelines on the intangibles? We know that uh, 
intangible are not the EEG factors, but uh, um, but um, certain types of of, uh, of uh, intangibles uh, are reflected on the EEG performance metrics. So good uh, uh, EEG uh, investments can uh, um, can increase the asset, uh, the intangible asset value of the company. So in some way, when uh, uh, EBA guidelines speaks about uh, EEG factors. Uh, this is related also to, to intangibles. Uh, the problem is that uh, the integration uh, by the uh, financial institution of ESG factors uh, is, uh, is, uh, is not easy. It's not easy because uh, um, there is a lack of ESG information from the, from the uh, corporate clients. Uh, Non-financial uh, non reporting directives uh, concern few companies. In Italy, for example, only 200 companies. Uh, most SMEs and several large companies don't report non-financial information. Yes, maybe in the uh, next future, thanks to CSRD, uh, large companies uh, or listed SMEs uh, will integrate uh, the um, uh, ESG information uh, with the financial information. But uh, to date, uh, there is this, uh, this problem about this lack of uh, uh, this uh, uh, sustainable data gap in some way, okay? So uh, banks uh, and financial institutions uh, uh, try to solve this problem uh, with different uh, strategies. Uh, um, <clears throat> collecting public uh, available data, data, for example, about uh, uh, physical risk of the companies. Uh, or uh, uh, try to estimate the ESG risks uh, through uh, sector averages and uh, also uh, try to collect that information from EEG questionnaires. The problem of uh, EEG questionnaires is that, uh, above all for, for example, SMEs, uh, companies, uh, many companies are not uh, prepared to answer to EEG uh, technical questions. So sometimes these uh, questionnaires are incomplete or not correct, and this is a, a problem of, uh, uh, of this type of data, data. So here are, uh, comes our specific experience. Um, working at the side of uh, an Italian bank, uh, not a big institution, but uh, uh, an inst uh, a bank uh, working in the north of Italy with many uh, corporate uh, clients, uh, many SMEs, okay. Um, we started with a consultancy service to companies on behalf of the bank. Uh, the bank uh, decided to integrate the, the process to the new banking credit merit and the renewals of the banking credit merit um, to integrate this process with a ESG assessment where a ESG technical, uh, ESG technical advisor interviewed the companies on about uh, 50 matters and uh, all this information data um, are put in a, um, a rating agency platform purchased by the bank so that at the end of the interview um, there is, the result is a EAG score for the company and not only the score but also um, a list of suggestions and action to improve the EAG score. So um, the result is that uh, uh, the bank can have a comprehensive ESG information about the, the, the companies uh, in some way uh, certified by the, that advisor, the technical advisor, okay. And from the other side, uh, uh, for the company, it's no longer a compliance matter, but uh, in some way the bank uh, gives a service uh, to the company, um, a service in, 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 uh, that means uh, that the, the companies can receive, can, uh, can have the possibility to um, improve the business plan, to make the business plan more competitive in a, in a market where ESG factors are, uh, are very, very important. Um, and so this is this double win for the, for the bank and for the companies. And from, um, I think that this, is, this can be an example of how to improve uh, uh, intangible value asset of the company also through this, this type of process. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now, when you talk about uh, your experience, is this now as um, with your head of discovers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Just to make things clear. 
I'm going to give you a microphone. Otherwise, you have to pass it on all the time. Okay. I will take that one. Uh, Karin, you uh, are active in corporate loans, mezzanine finance, standard loans, subordinated loans, and, and many, many more with PMV. Yeah, indeed. Um, so maybe because I don't think a lot of people know PMV, um, PMV is the investment company of the Flemish uh, region, actually. So we're a bit government owned and we have as a mission to support the Flemish economy and facilitate financing within um, yeah, within Flemish uh, companies or companies that have added value in Flanders. So we have uh, a complementary role uh, with the banks. So as we, I work in the corporate loan department, so my core job is to uh, um, yeah, to give mezzanine financing uh, to uh, yeah, mostly SMEs and companies. Um, so we see when, when banks uh, finance their senior senior risk, so they try to cover their risk with security packages, uh, and that's why it's sometimes difficult for intangibles because intangibles you cannot take security on because it's difficult to validate and afterwards when things go wrong to monetize. Um, at PMV and mezzanine financing, we don't take security packages. So for us, it is uh, necessary uh, that we believe in the future cash flows of the company. And we do uh, a thorough screening on the level of intangibles just to see if the core of the company is uh, good enough to be generating uh, cash flows in the future. Uh, ESG is one of the more, because I was very intrigued with what you were saying, uh, so I have several questions for you, um, because we try to um, also integrate ESG now, uh, maybe more from also a risk perspective to see if there are not certain risks that uh, pop up, uh, but we also try to make it a positive story and to yeah, integrate action plans based on the results that we get. We have the same conclusions as you. We send out those questionnaires, we get them back. Um, they're filled in, but not always that, uh, yeah, the, the quality is a bit, uh, is a bit, uh, is a bit tricky, but I, I think that we are in the state now. And when I talk to um, fellow public investment companies and also to banks uh, towards SMEs, we're more in a stage of, okay, we want to get a, SME is familiar with the questions that we ask. We want to encourage them uh, to go deeper on them and create awareness. Uh, we get a lot of questions on why don't you um, develop based on the answers scoring and is yeah, an ESG rate and, and base your financing on that. But for us, I have the feeling that we cannot yet do that because um, it still seems... I don't want to say arbitrary because that's not the word, but uh, you need to... Before you can rate something, you need to compare it to other companies. I, mean, I, I think that is difficult. So how do you do that? Yeah, uh, data. Your microphone. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, we, you, uh, we use a, a rating agency platform. We, we put the data information of, from the interview in a rating agency uh, platform. Uh, to have uh, a sco uh, some rating, uh, scoring or rating uh, uh, so compare with other uh, with other companies. The problem of ESG rating is that uh, there is no one standard. So this rating agency have his uh, calculation, his calculation. But for um, if I, if I take another uh, rating agency, maybe the the, the 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 rating is another. I don't know. So, but to to put in practice to have a, sc a scoring slash uh, rating ESG. We use uh, not a uh, not a, a, a platform of Escadus Capital, but a platform of a rating agency, so that there is a, uh, some some objectivity of the uh, and the comparison with other uh, with other companies. The problem with the comparison is that uh, the comparison is uh, is made uh, uh, with the, the uh, DNF the, the DNF companies in in the Europe, for, exa for example. And there are uh, a few data about a few data about, uh, for example, SMEs. So, okay, there the is a com there is a comparison, but uh, limited to a few 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 numbers of uh, of companies. Yeah, it's very recognizable, and also your question is very good. So I do the the rating agencies for ABN Amro, and they all differ in their opinion of the sustainability of ABN Amro, right? So they don't agree. So it's very very challenging. I think. 
the model that you described, we have a similar one on, on granting loans. We call it CASI, Client Assessment on Sustainability. But it's very important, and I mentioned this this morning as well, it's, it's part of the loan application process, right? So if someone comes to the bank and applies for a loan, we do a check on all kinds of stuff, including sustainability, in line with IBA loan uh, regulation that you described. From a banking perspective, that is very much a risk-oriented questionnaire. So how much risk or how much sustainability risk is in this loan? Um, what clients are often more interested in is, and the world, I would say, the world as well, is where are the sustainability-related opportunities? Where can we really improve? That is, not, that is a very different question. So if we were to grant a loan to a company, to a corporate, and we feel that there's a high sustainability risk, um, then we would have more questions, do more research, more due diligence, etc. If we want to improve the sustainability performance of the company, or if the company itself wants to get recommendations on how to improve the sustainability performance, that is often a different instrument. That is a sustainability linked loan or a green bond mm -hmm. or an advisory service on how to become more sustainable. And well, it is increasingly the in the interest of banks and uh, a service model within banks to provide that type of advisory uh, for sustainability linked loans or to do these, to do these loan uh, constructions with sustainability KPIs linked to them uh, or green bond services or social bonds or uh, uh, impact bonds more in general. But it's fundamentally a different approach if you want to know the sustainability risk of a client, uh, which is what we said this morning, is the bank getting its money back or is there a risk that they will get fined, the client will get fined on all kinds of ESG related aspects? Or do we want to help the client improve their sustainability performance uh, from another angle? And I think it's good to have that can, distinction. We cannot forget, uh, from the banking perspective, uh, your goal is to make some benefits, of course, um, that you have to pay the bad loans with the margin you have on your good loans. Well, yes, that's true. That in, in it's essence, the basics that, of. Uh, well, in essence, that's true. And what we are seeing more and more is that sustainability risk is a crucial element of the assessment of a client. And so uh, uh, traditionally you would look at cash flow and you know profitability of a client and but but now ESG risk is really uh, it's not only reputational risk for for AB Nomo, but it's a really fundamental risk to the client uh, that can lead to a lot of fines that can lead and if the client is fined or if the uh, sometimes I use the example of shipping, right? So shipping is not the most sustainable sector, uh, but if a vessel is not sustainable enough and the ports are introducing new regulation on whether the, sh the vessel can come into Antwerp port or to Rotterdam port, that has a direct link with the value of the vessel that we are financing. Yep. So this is where ESG risk becomes a financial risk if you get it wrong. Yeah, uh, Karine, you told me that uh, uh, PMV is working with uh, cash flow assumptions. Um, how far are you going in those assumptions? Assumptions, yeah, but cash flow is, is very large. Yeah? So, uh, yeah, we look at the past and we look at a plan that the company has for the future. And then we see what's behind it to realize that plan. Um, because, yeah, we finance on moments of growth. Uh, we do a lot of M&A. It is mostly when the company has a larger risk profile because it's going to do a large investment that the bank is not going to finance uh, by itself. So I don't know what you mean, but how deep uh, do, do you go with it? Um, of course, it's revenue based, but we also look at the uh, sustainability of those revenues. And then you look further um, and you look at the workforce that is in place, the intellectual property that is in place, and of course, also sustainability. Yep. And I agree with you, um, Chert, when you say that it is also a financial risk and it's also a risk for future cash flows if sustainability is not right or is, is there are some issues uh, within. The only thing that we, uh, it's not struggling, uh, but um, it is more difficult to quantify the sustainability risk and to reflect it in the interest rate. So um, mm. that is something that I think that... That is something that will evolve in financial uh, in the financial world. That um, in yeah, in a certain period of time, we're going to be more. It's going to be more linked. 
Yeah, I agree. So monetizing it in this sense or translating it directly into a credit uh, increase or a rate increase or uh, but what so what we generally do is um, based on the sector and the country and the operations that we are financing is seeing if is this is a high, medium or low risk, risk from a sustainability perspective. If it's a high risk, we will ask more questions, mm -hmm. we'll do more due diligence. And if it's a low risk, it becomes an easier line of credit to, to provide. But you're right, translating that into, you know, 13 basis points additional uh, interest rate, that is going to be very difficult. We do, however, uh, so from again, from the opportunity side, we do pro provide interest rate discounts on very sustainable projects. It's not coming from risk-based pricing. It's not coming from the modeling, but it's just coming from an incentive uh, where the bank says we want to support um, more, more innovative or more sustainable uh, type of companies. So, uh, and, and if they apply for that, then a sustainability linked loan can be um, uh, can be used for, an I for a lower interest rate. Okay, perfect. If I can, Marco, if Marco. I can add, um, in, in our case, uh, uh, we try to uh, to use the ESG assessment and the ESG rating to give uh, to the bank the, uh, in some way, a level of risk about the ESG matters and intangibles. But also for the, the side of the companies, uh, we try to uh, to give okay the ESG, the ESG rating, but also suggestion to improve these uh, the ESG rating. So uh, that means uh, uh, to help to build the first uh, sustainability report or integrated report, uh, or uh, other suggestion about uh, action to investments to do in E S or G uh, sector. So uh, because of the, the, these customers are mainly SMEs customers. Uh, and uh, in the uh, in the SMEs, uh, they, pre they, they, they are not prepared for these uh, type of uh, matters. So um, our case is uh, useful for the bank uh, from one side, but also for the companies from the other side to to create culture, to create, to improve uh, mm -hmm. their organization mm -hmm. about these uh, these matters. Marco, when you um, I'm talking I down. There was a question there. Oh. Yes, yeah, Sherry. Hmm. Yes, so we do. Uh, maybe for the viewers at home, I'll repeat the question. So what is the, the, the validity of the information and the, the credibility of the information? Yeah, but this is not different from ESG. Inform ESG information is no different from other information. We ask, uh, so when you apply for a loan as a corporate, we, we will ask you hundreds of questions. And th sometimes the answer need to be validated by an accountant. Dep again, depending on the type of question, this, or we want the the information to be publicly available, or we, or sometimes the client only wants to to give us the information under uh, secrecy or right? under under uh, confidentiality. Um, so there's no. What we are trying to do is not to have this sustainability as being the odd one out. It's just an integral part of doing business, but it is a search. Uh, sometimes for the client as well, on providing us with credible information. Uh, and that can be a real challenge because if they have not, uh, you mentioned NFDR, which is only a limited and even CSRD, it's a larger set of companies, but it's still very small. So providing us with a high quality uh, uh, ESG related information can be a real challenge, but I think this can also be the role of banks, right? Uh, asking our clients this this type and making them aware that it's valuable information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, Karin. Yeah, no, if I can uh, add to that, because it's for me, it's a big difference if you're talking to a large corp and talking to an SME, because we mm. uh, talk a lot with uh, SMEs. Um, they have gained some professional level in financial reporting, but ESG reporting, uh, no. So we are struggling with that a little bit more. Uh, we do, we, because we're also setting our uh, procedures, because um, because we, like I said, we finance based on cash flow. So to verify if the business plans are correct, we also work with a third party to do due diligence and to have that checked. Um, now, in our ESG uh, yeah, policy, actually, we also have the um, ability to, um, yeah, to ask a third party to do uh, ESG due diligence on the data. 
uh, but it's not yet often used uh, because um, how do I say it? It's also, yeah, it's an SME, it's costly, it's, it's time driven, it's, it takes a lot of effort. So I think that it, we will go there, right? it will evolve, but uh, for the SMEs and how we look at it now, it's, uh, it's more, are they willing to give us the data? Do they have the attitude to uh, want to improve? And that is more important for us. Of course, we check if there are not really big, big risks, eh? but um, yeah, so really uh, break points, but um, I th yeah, I think it's our role now, and I think the banks are also taking up that role for the SMEs to create the awareness and to help yeah, to help the SMEs to, uh, to find their way. Yeah. Uh, I have to do it myself because uh, we have five minutes left, so I'm my, time, my own timekeeper. Uh, but I have a question for you, Pietro. Um, when you get a file on your desk, um, uh, sorry, Marco. Um, uh, when you get a file on your on your desk and you explain them what we saw in your presentation, how do the customers react? Also towards the the financiers that you talk with, uh, how what is their way of of seeing things? Yeah, uh, as I said before, uh, it becomes not not a matter of uh, compliance. Because at the beginning, the company say, OK, bank ask me another thing, another information. Or oh, how many information ask me the bank for the, the bank credit. Uh, but uh, with, the, with this type of service that the bank uh, give to the, to the company, they, they understand that uh, can be a, an opportunity to, uh, to improve the, their organization, to improve the organization about the, these matters. Because they understand that. Uh, EG matters, intangibles are important to be on the market. Sometimes these SMEs are in the supply chain or large corporation, for example. So these large corporations are asking them many information about EG matters, and they don't know how to, to, to reply, to, to answer. No? So um, many of these companies uh, and, um, appreciate a lot this type of service because they, uh, uh, for them, is an opportunity to, 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 have, uh, to have this information, to, to uh, because all, almost uh, uh, as a miser, uh, there are no, there is no CSR manager inside uh, the, this, these companies. Okay, mm. so there is no uh, also a preparation, uh, a culture about about this thing. So this is this is an opportunity for them. Uh, Chert, I see that you have a yeah. question, and uh, then I want to ask you all of you, 30 seconds. What is for you the actual blocking factor to continue? Okay, we'll, we'll wrap up on that. But and that, first, okay. in addition to your comment, what is also good to remember is that a lot of the regulation that is there already, EBALOM and EU taxonomy, requires a different mindset from the banks, specifically focusing on SMEs. The, 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 the different mindset is that we need to look at what activities we are financing. And traditionally, banks don't look at the activity, they look at the entity that they are financing. They're looking at the, cor the corporate that they are financing and checking to see if they will get their money back. Much of the regulation that is now getting into place is asking us, or forcing us, if you, if you prefer, to look at the activities that we are actually financing. And that's a very different approach also from an, particularly from an ESG angle. You want to know what the company is doing with the money that you are, are, are providing for them, not so much what the company is doing as a whole. And, and that activity lens is really going to help the conversation with the client as well, because then you can make that activity more sustainable. But you want to wrap up with the 30 seconds. So, uh, 30 seconds, what are the blocking factors for you, Karin? Time and money. <laughs> that's, that's 10 seconds. You still have 20 seconds. No, no, thank you. No, because for the SMEs, eh, they don't have time to collect all the data because they don't have, they have to do everything oh, yeah, themselves. They have limited workforce and they have um, no money to have another FTE come in place and do all that for them or to hire a consultant or something like that. So I think time and money. Yeah. Marco? Yeah, uh, I think so. I, <laughs> the same thing time, time and money. The mic, Marco. And time, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> time and money, and uh, also preparation, uh, um, technical preparation about uh, this this type of thing. So, this is, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's not going to be very original, but I would translate it into knowledge and expertise. So, and you can buy that with if you have the time and the money. But I think so for our clients, the knowledge and the expertise is the is the challenge. Whether we ask them to pay for it, or maybe we can help them a little. Work in progress. Oh, good. 
Oh, that's uh, perfect. Uh, <laughs> So we start again, but uh, uh, so, so no. So I mean, uh, um, especially smaller companies that you mentioned, they don't have a CSR manager or a team. Uh, they lack the knowledge and the skills, and this is where I really think the financial sector banks can help our, their clients to build that expertise. That we that way we can share perhaps the money burden just a little. Perfect. Thank you. I thank the audience. I thank the panel. Uh, we have to move, people have to go to zero, some others will come up. Thank you all. Thank you.